Welcome to another TI Inspire CX tutorial. In this session, we will learn about Z scores and how to calculate them. To help us understand, I'll go back in time to 1978 when one of the highest grossing arcade games of all time was introduced Space Invaders. It was released on a standalone machine that was usually housed in a shop or arcade, hence the name Arcade Games. The goal of the game was to defeat wave after wave of alien spacecraft, including a few random bonus ones along the way. Enthusiasts bragged about their highest scores, which were stored on the actual machine. From time to time, the game experiences a resurgence courtesy of retro gamers keen to revisit their past. These retro gamers can share their highest scores on the internet using specific versions of the adapted game. The technology in the original machines was obviously not as responsive as new computers. So how can we compare new high scores with the original ones? If the scores for each generation are normally distributed, then we have a simple solution. We can convert them into Z scores. We will start with the average score for our original gamers. We can see how far each one is above or below the average. The positive sign means they were above average, the negative sign indicates below average. We could compare that to our current day gamers. The problem is we still don't have enough information to complete the comparison. Just because an original gamer was 100 points above average doesn't tell us whether they are any better or worse than a current day gamer who is also 100 points above the average. What we need to know now is how much the scores were spread out around their respective average, that is, the standard deviation of each distribution. Once we have the standard deviation, we can see how their distance from the average compares to the standard deviation. One of our original gamers, Buzz, had a high score of 6,210. The average score in those days was 6,000, with a standard deviation of 200. So, Buzz's standardised, or Z score, is 1.05. In other words, Buzz's score, relative to all other high scores of his era, is a little bit more than one standard deviation above the mean. So let's see how Buzz's score compares with one of our retro gamers. Chris's high score was 7,320, but our modern day gamers have an average score of 7,000 and a standard deviation of 250. So we see that Chris's standardised score, or Z score, is 1.28. In other words, Chris's score relative to all other high scores of his era is a little bit more than 1.28 standard deviations above the mean. The conclusion we can draw from this is that relative to their peers or generation, Chris is a better space invader than Buzz. Suppose one of our current day gamers, Wombat, would like to beat one of the original gamers, Alex. We know that Alex was above average, and Wombat is currently slightly below. So what score does Wombat need to get in order to beat Alex? First, we work out Alex's standardised score. Next, we need to work out Wombat's score. We'll call it X. We know that the current average is 7000 and that the standard deviation is 250. So we can solve this problem for X. So, Wombat needs to score at least 7112 points to beat Alex's original score. That's all for this tutorial. You can download a free question sheet from the Texas Instruments Australia website to practice these types of questions. 
check out our other videos. Subscribe to our channel to be kept informed as we add more videos to this series. Thanks for watching.